So today I'm going to be doing a book review and the book that I'm going to be reviewing is Furies of Calderon which is by Jim Butcher. This book I was going to do as a co-read with Char's new chapter, Charlotte, but we started it and we got a little way through and then she had some personal issues so we never finished it but we are hoping to do another co-read in the future together. I'm just going to review this for you guys on my own and let's just get started. So I absolutely loved this book. I was not sure if I would or not. I've had it on my shelf for ages and I just wasn't sure what it was all about. The Codex Illyria series is supposed to be really really good but I just didn't know very much about it or what it was all about so I just kind of picked it up on a whim. This story is just fantastic. It is a thrill ride the whole way through. It is so fast paced, so quick 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 from one thing to the next to the next and it's a massive adventure that they go on and just all these exciting things happen, big battles and chases and everything is just very very quick pacing which I really enjoyed because a lot of fantasies are very slow to build but this one was just straight into the action and it maintained it the whole way through which I wasn't sure it would be able to do but it definitely did and it really captured my attention and I just read the whole thing really really quickly. So the story is set in a world where everyone has a fury, a fury or multiple furies are essentially these kind of spirit like things and they all have their own personalities and they're all very individual and they all kind of relate to an element so you can get water furies, you can get fire furies, you can get basically anything and everything, earth furies. People who have these furies they have varying degrees of control and power over them some people have a fury but they can't really use it very much or they're not very effective with it whereas other people can be very very strong with their fury and their furies can do all sorts of really interesting and exciting things like remould the surface of the land if it's an earth fury or make a river like obey its commands if it's a water fury so it's very 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 powerful magic and that was something that I really really got into in this story because obviously a lot of fantasies do have a little bit of magic but this was very focused on the magic and I really like that. In fact these furies are so commonplace, everyone has one, that they are used every day, day to day in everyday life to sort out conflicts, you may have two people who are arguing and they would fight with their furies or someone else might get involved with their fury. You have furies who you use to help you do manual tasks if you work out in the fields and things like that. So they really are a part of life, they are something that everyone just has in this world. So they're really embedded into the culture. Tavi is one of the main characters, we follow two main characters, Tavi and Amara, and we see from their points of view alternating chapters. There are also a few chapters which are other people as well, but I'll tell you about them in a second. So Tavi is a young farm boy, he lives on a steadhold with his aunt and uncle. His uncle is the stead holder who owns the stead hold. His aunt and uncle are both very very powerful. They have very powerful furies and they're very strong and they could easily be working for the crown if they wanted to but obviously they don't. Tabby is quite unusual because unlike most of the other people, well unlike all of the other people, he doesn't actually have a fury and he's old enough by now that his fury should have come to him but they just haven't and no one really knows why. No one understands why he does not have a fury, but it means that he has had to fight harder to get through life. He's got to keep track of the sheep and he's got to do all the manual labour himself because he doesn't have a fury to assist him with it. So he he's kind of grown up with a little bit of a disadvantage to everyone, but that then means that when furies are disabled he has a bigger advantage because he doesn't have a fury and he's never had one so he's never had to worry about relying on their fury whereas a lot of other people can be easily incapacitated if you take away their fury or stop them from reaching their fury somehow. For example you have air furies and air casters who can be blocked if they have earth or mud covering them because earth and air are two opposites so if you are covered in mud and you are an aircrafter then you can't actually reach your fury and you can't communicate with them. So Tabby in that situation would be a lot better than someone who does have a fury and can't reach it. Everyone kind of sees Tabby as a little bit useless and a little bit young and naive but in actuality I found that he was a lovable character, he's very very endearing. He's very young, he's very quiet and he doesn't do much to provoke attention but he is really kind and he definitely has a kind heart and you see that straight away in one of the opening chapters of this book when he does something to save Amara. So 
it's really, really a good story, and he was a really lovely character who I found myself liking from the first page, so definitely I enjoyed his part in the story, and I thought that he was a really lovely quirk to it. The other main character is Amara. Amara is an air crafter. She has a fury who controls air, called Cirrus, and she is a cursor. She works for the crown. She's kind of like a, a guard for the crown, and she has to go out and do duty for the crown. And she is sent on a big mission to kind of uncover the plot that is going on, to assassinate the ruler, and so she is on a big adventure going around all sorts of different places, talking to all sorts of different people about what is going on, and how everything has become so terrible, because everything is building up to this big, big war that is going to happen because of two different sides meeting one another, so it's really interesting to see from her point of view. I didn't actually find myself liking her until quite close to the end. She's got quite high-strung morals and therefore she's a little bit unrelatable in some areas. She is very passionate, she is very strong and she is very caring when she is friends with you, but otherwise she's quite a deadly force. So I found myself liking her but I just didn't connect with her as well as I did with Tabby, so yeah, she's a good character though, and definitely her part in the book is absolutely necessary. I didn't find myself bored whilst reading it or anything. I still enjoyed her parts, I just preferred Tabby's on the whole. Bernard and Isana are two of the other major characters who play a big role in the story, and they are Tabby's aunt and uncle. Bernard is an earth crafter, and Isana is a water crafter. And they are both incredibly strong, very, very, very powerful but they're also very loving and very caring and they dote on Tabby quite a lot. He is their baby and they just care for him so much, they worry about him and they're just very very kind-hearted people and they care for everyone who lives in their steadhold and they're very sensitive and caring towards anyone's needs who comes to them. However, they are both leaders and with leading comes responsibility and therefore comes burden. They do get into a lot of hard situations, tough situations that they have to get out of they've got to make very big decisions and change the future of their town. Fidelius is another major character, he's essentially the bad guy of the story, and he has two main sidekicks who are called Odiana and Aldric, and together they are quite an evil side of the story. They're kind of the bad guys, they're chasing the others and they're against them and they're just fighting for everything that the others aren't. They don't want peace and prosperity of the land, they want the ruler to be overthrown, they believe he's a bad ruler, they believe that he's driving the country into disarray, and that everything is just really not looking good for their country. So they believe that they're fighting for the right thing, even though we can see that they don't seem to be going about it in the same way that we perhaps would have. They kind of have gone to the extreme. They're very sinister, they have darker pasts and we don't know that much about them, and they scheme a lot together, they do a lot of plotting, and it is interesting to see from their point of view and see why they are thinking as they are, because that's definitely something that you wonder about, but I still didn't agree with what they were doing, so they are definitely the evil driving force of the story. There's also Cord. Cord is a really nasty guy, he is one of the stead holders who lives near to Bernard and Isana. He is just a very, very nasty guy. He has two sons, and one of his sons is accused of raping another young lady. He denies all these accusations, and then he gets into a lot of trouble, and therefore he does some terrible, terrible things within the story. He was very, very nasty and he was a lot meaner than I initially thought he was going to be when we first met him. I thought he was just a coward, but in actuality he is a very, very horrible character, so he was definitely well introduced and very well maintained as character, and he got nastier as it went along, which was very interesting to see, and it definitely added a new sense of evil to the story as well. And it showed that not only are the bad guys bad, but there are people who live close to you and who you have lived with all of your life who can turn evil and be bad. That was a very cool thing to see in the story. I found that the whole host of the characters were really interesting, and I didn't have any who I particularly didn't like reading about, so I really enjoyed it and I raced through this story pretty quickly when I sat down to read it. So I did enjoy them, I thought they were all vibrant, they were all exciting, and they all had different quirks and qualities to them, and they were all very believable characters. The Marat are essentially kind of a tribe race, and I found them really, really interesting. I definitely think that they were one of the highlights of the story for me, 
and I really found them to be very exciting and different to anything I'd ever read about before. I definitely find myself liking tribal things a lot better because it's so different to our culture. They have their own ways of handling everything and sorting out arguments and just debating everything. So it's a really different culture and it's very exciting and I very much hope that they do reappear in the next books because I thought that they were absolutely amazing and I definitely enjoyed their characters. There were some evil ones and some good ones so yeah they were quite twisted and different to the men but they were really cool in their own way. The Furies themselves were are really really interesting. I really like that they have their own personalities and I'm definitely interested to see how people get their fury, their element and why it is that they get water or air or whatever and if it has to do something with personality I'm not really sure but I really loved that the Furies had their own individual characters. Although they don't speak they kind of give impressions to their masters about what they want to do and things like this and it's really interesting to see them develop as the story goes on and I really enjoyed that quality and I definitely hope that that gets explained a little bit more in the next coming books because that was one of the only reasons that I didn't give this five stars is because I still want to know quite a lot more about the Furies. They just kind of get thrust into the story and we don't really know exactly what they are or what they're capable of. So it's definitely exciting to have them in the story but I want to know a lot more about them as this time goes on. I ended up giving this a four and a half star rating because it was a really really good read and I would highly recommend it so definitely check this out if you haven't already guys. So on the whole this series got off to a really really good start and I very much enjoyed it and I definitely will be picking up the next one as soon as I possibly can buy it. So thank you guys for watching, definitely let me know down below if you have read this and what you thought of it because I really enjoyed it and I definitely want to know if it gets better or if it gets worse or what you guys think about it. So let me know. As always, if you do put a spoiler, please put spoiler at the top of your comments so that no one does get spoiled. And thank you guys for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little chat.